So the single greatest threat to the political and social hegemony that the left has in the United States, of course, is free speech. If you can say what you really think, they can't hold power. Words are the biggest threat to them. Not guns, words. So of course they can't let Elon Musk take over Twitter, not because he's a right winger, he's not, but because he wants to let you speak. You have no power but your voice and he wants to give it back to you. They can't allow that. So they're doing everything they can to destroy Elon Musk as a person before he can give you free speech. Hard to believe this is happening, but it did. Today, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, not supposed to be political, now just a tool of the Biden administration, threatened to investigate Musk. Joe Biden, for his part, just suggests that Elon Musk might be a threat to national security. Mr. President, do you think Elon Musk is a threat to U.S. national security and should the U.S. and with the tools you have investigate his joint acquisition of Twitter with foreign governments, which include the Saudis? <laughs> I think that Elon Musk's cooperation and or technical relationships with other countries uh, is worthy of being looked at. You'll notice that in that brief moment of lucid thought, he giggled because he's thinking to himself, is Elon Musk a threat because of his relationship with foreign countries? Wait, I pressured the Ukrainian government to do business with my son and helped him with his business deals with China. <laughs> and now we're going after Elon Musk. Okay. What's interesting is even as they're threatening to arrest Elon Musk or whatever that just was, at the same time, Biden's Justice Department seems not very interested in a man called Sam Bankman-Fried. Why is that? Well, maybe because Bankman-Fried was the Democratic Party's second biggest donor this cycle just over 30 thereabouts, but he came in right behind George Soros for the amount of money that he gave to Democrats. And he's friends with all of them. We're gonna do a much longer piece on this soon because it's fascinating. But his crypto company just blew up, destroyed a lot of people's net worth. Now, apparently as his company was tanking, Bankman Free continued to send millions of dollars to the Democratic Party. So the question is, is that fraud? We don't know, but someone should be asking that question, no? No one seems to be. No warrant has been issued. Why? Well, because he's a political ally. He's not Elon Musk. Where is he? Well, we can't interview him because he's not in the country. Apparently, he's in the Bahamas. A source told Coindesk, quote, that the whole operation, the company that just blew up, was run by a gang of kids in the Bahamas in a luxury penthouse. But don't ask questions. Vivek Ramaswamy is a man who's been around a lot of high finance. He's an entrepreneur and a really interesting person, sophisticated in the ways of the stuff. He joins us tonight. Vivek, thanks so much for coming on. So they're basically threatening Elon Musk from the podium in the White House because he dares to bring back free speech, but ignoring this Democratic donor? So it's funny, it's this arranged marriage between big government and big business in this country, Tucker. Yes. You know it well. Where actually Elon was a darling, by the way, when he was pushing the I climate know. religion. He only fell out of favor when he started pushing free speech. Now take this guy, Sam Bankman-Fried, who actually goes by SBF in the crypto world. So let's call him SBF. The interesting thing here is he actually bought protection. He played the old Goldman Sachs pre-2008 game. You'll remember this. Goldman Sachs paid for a lot of protection from the government to pay out. It's like an insurance policy when it matters most. When the 2008 financial crisis hit, that's why Goldman Sachs got bailed out while Lehman Brothers didn't. Well, SBF appears to be playing a really similar game. He's a top donor to the Democratic Party, even as his exchange was going bust. Yet there's one small nuance to this, Tucker. I think they might actually go after him and punish him anyway. And here's the funny part not a lot of people know. He actually had pledged up to a billion dollars in donations this cycle and next. So there were actually a lot of Democrats upset with him that he only gave 30 to 40 million. So if they do go after him, it's because he didn't buy the gold-plated insurance policy. He just stopped at the cheap version of the insurance policy instead. And so if he is indicted, or if he does get in trouble, that'll be one of the lessons of the story for future crony capitalists is pay up for full freight or else you're gonna get in trouble. Amazing. Just in 10 seconds, since you're old enough to remember, an oligarch pledging to throw a billion dollars into a Democratic election. Democrats used to complain about big money, right? Didn't they? 
That's exactly right. What happened to the Citizens United? Corporations are not people old left. The, the <laughs> party that used to be skeptical of the expansion of corporate power that said corporations shouldn't act like people now are the ones who want those corporations and corporatocratic autocrats to act more like people. That's a bit of an irony. It's an about face over the last 10 years. But what they realized is, you know what? It's not an arranged marriage where we have to love our partner. It's more just like mutual prostitution, and it works as long as each side gets something out of the trade, birth the illegitimate child of the woke industrial complex. That's where you get to where we are. Oh, Vivek, they must really hate you because you can explain it so very well. And I appreciate your doing it here. Thank you.